Hey guys, we're going to kick off a new chapter, polynomials, and basically it's an expression uh, with any uh, terms of x, um, and it doesn't really matter how many powers it is. So what we've uh, dealt with from a long time ago, linear equation, y equals mx plus c, you know, that that's a, that's a polynomial, so you could have y equals 2x plus 3, that's, uh, that's a polynomial. Okay, and then we moved on to quadratics, where um, ax squared plus bx plus c, that, that's also a polynomial, so we could have um, something like uh, 2, we could have something like uh, 2x squared plus uh, 4x uh, minus 6, you know, um, that's, that's a polynomial. And then um, if we were to look at uh, cubic um, terms, uh, we could have something like minus 5x cubed uh, plus uh, x over 2. And because it's got a it's got that term, we could say it's got plus 6. It doesn't really matter that that's also a, a cubic uh, function, okay, which is also a polynomial. Now, the, the one thing that we probably have looked at in the past uh, with other uh, functions that are not po uh, polynomials, okay, so not polynomials, are uh, things like, so uh, some examples, uh, 1 over x, uh, say x to the power of minus 2, uh, the square root of x, um, and then 2 to the power of x, uh, sine of x, etc. Now, if you look at each of those um, different uh, expressions, then this is also reverted to x to the power of minus 1. Here we have a negative power, a negative power. Um, x, that's like x to the power of a half. And so what I want you to note is that polynomials uh, includes integers, okay? So whole numbers, uh, the powers here, the powers are whole numbers, okay? The other fundamental criteria for polynomials, they, the powers must be positive, okay? So here we have a positive 1, here we have a positive 2, here we have a positive 3. Whereas um, what we see here, it's a negative 1, so that's out, negative 2, that's out, and then that's a, not a whole number, that's an integer, so that's out. And then with these two, the same rules apply, um, that it doesn't fit the criteria of being a whole number as well as being positive, okay? Anything which has uh, a term with the highest power, so I'm just going to call these the leading terms, okay? The leading terms is the term with the highest power of x. So in this case here, <clears throat> 2x is the leading term. Um, and I'm going to call it degree 1 because the power of this leading term is 1. Um, this next one here, this quadratic, I'm calling it degree 2 because the leading term has a power of 2. And if you uh, can predict with... a uh, a cubic function, uh, the leading term has a degree <clears throat> of 3, degree 3, and if we were to even write down something where this is x to the power of 4 uh, plus 5x squared minus 3, um, something like that, the leading term is that term there because it's got the highest power, and therefore this is degree 4, uh, because that is the highest value of the power in the leading term. Okay, so basically in this video, I just want you to be familiar with the different uh, terms, uh, different parts of a polynomial, and just kind of recalibrate uh, your understanding of what we're dealing with. So what we have here is just uh, an example of a, of a polynomial. Okay, and we have uh, four terms. That's the first thing that we know. Uh, the leading term is 6x cubed, 
and this is uh, of degree three. Okay, um, we could also say that the coefficient of x cubed, coefficient of x cubed is six. I might even just put different colors. Coefficient of x cubed is six. Um, the coefficient of x squared is 16. Make sure it's positive 16. And then the coefficient of x is negative 1. Okay, so negative 1, positive 16, and positive 6. And then obviously we have our constant. Okay, and our constant is going to be that value at the end. So you understand how all the three, or oh, sorry, at least the four parts here all connect with each other. If we had something like, uh, say, x to the power of 4 uh, plus 5x cubed minus 6x squared minus 7, okay, so we, we still have four terms here. Um, we've got, uh, I guess, degree. Uh, degree 4 in this case because the leading term we have here not necessarily at the front okay now let's say if the terms were for instance in this case let's say the 4 was there we've got a 3 and a 2 just to mix things up and confuse you uh, it's still degree 4 uh, because this is your this is now your leading term okay it's the term that has the highest power now the the leading coefficient is then going to be the coefficient of the leading term. Okay. Now, just to backtrack with uh, what I initially had, so just going back to this part, if we had, um, again, this is still degree 4, uh, 3, 2, the leading term here does not have a coefficient, or the coefficient is, uh, you know, assumed as 1. So, and if you were to rethink back to our quadratics, and we had uh, a monic, and we had non-monic, okay? So, the monic expression, or monic uh, quadratic, would be where the leading term had a coefficient of 1. And in this case here, this is considered a monic polynomial, okay? Because the leading term here, the leading term being of degree 4, has a coefficient of 1. If this number 1 was then replaced with, say, 6x to the power 4, it's no longer monic because the coefficient of the leading term is no longer 1. It's greater than that. So then I'm just going to go through just one other example before going to something a little bit... Um, just to exercise your familiarity with your calculators. Here we have uh, an expression. And I want you to look at it that this has five terms. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, one is being your constant. Okay. And conveniently, this is in order. So x to the power of 6 is your leading term. It is monic because there are the coefficient of that leading term is 1, uh, and we should know that the coefficient of x to the power of 5 is minus 3, not just 3, it's a negative 3. Coefficient of x to the power of 4 is positive 2, and the coefficient of x is positive 6. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's move on to this example, uh, where I'll use the calculator as well. So, we've got uh, the distance travelled by a body after t seconds is given by that um, expression here. Uh, and using graphics calculator or graphing calculator or suitable computer software, draw a graph. So, we're not expecting, obviously, you, you don't know how to graph this at the moment. Um, so, we're using our calculators for this. So, we'll go to a calculator, hit graph. And uh, in this case, we're just going to use our going to replace t uh, with x, so x to the power of 3 um, plus 2x squared minus 4x and plus 5. 
and we get this uh, immediately okay now the next thing that it's asking is that we want uh, to graph it within a certain, uh, certain domain uh, which is between 0 and 3 so what we'll do we'll go to menu we'll go to uh, window and window settings and our x minimum is 0 and our x maximum is going to be 3 okay so then that makes it uh, puts it into the correct uh, correct frame and what we can see is it's we only want this portion of the graph not everything else that looks a little bit uh, unusual for you guys at this point in time okay so uh, what information does the constant term gives well it's going to uh, translate it to five units okay uh, what is the position of the body after one second and now this is what we could do uh, if you remember the trace function so going to menu hit five and then just graph trace and you've got this cursor uh, which follows immediately and so you can go left and right and so what i'm going to do is move around to where I see one and for some reason last time I did this it will go straight to a four okay so just imagine this is one this is four and so the position of the body after one second is actually uh, four units okay and then describe the words um, in words the motion in the first two seconds so what happens we can see that it starts off uh, at five okay at uh, the origin then within the first second it goes it's dipping down uh, to minimum where and then it then curves back out and further away from the origin again now at two we're looking at about 13 uh, 13 units uh, in this case we don't have the units for the distance it's just distance um, but we know that time is seconds so that's um that's basically what i would um, answer and it's just a familiarity again of knowing how to enter the graph into your calculator how to trace it how to uh, track it and and just being familiar with the different components of polynomials if you have any questions, let me know. Hopefully that helped you guys today. See you in the next one.